In days of old, when men were bold, the great steeds that they raced would, more often than not, have a whistling, whining supercharger pumping extra air into its gasping lungs. Of course, the great British Bentleys that dominated Le Mans in the mid-twenties didn't resort to such crude additions, but the dastardly German Mercedes that threatened their reign did. So a shining knight by the name of Tim Birkin strapped one on the front of his Bentley and set such a pace that the opposition expired under the strain. And this is the very first of those Birkin blower Bentleys, with its supercharger sitting very obviously right out at the front. There are various types of supercharger, but they're all driven by the crankshaft. The Bentley uses the roots blower principle, which quite literally blows extra air into the induction system, whilst other superchargers compress the air and force it in. They're all very simple ways of improving engine breathing, but they do sap a bit of power and they can make a bit of a din. In the post-war years, the supercharger became something of a forgotten fad. And when, in 1948, Jaguar launched the first of their XK range of sports cars, this glorious XK120, with 160 horsepower from its 3.4-litre straight-six engine, it was felt there was no need for all the noise and aggravation of a blower. Indeed, only now, a full 50 years later, do we get the first ever supercharged XK Jaguar, the XKR. And, just like the Bentley, it uses a roots blower system. It looks almost identical to the XK8, with the addition of a wire mesh grille, louvers in the bonnet, this tiny boot spoiler and distinctive 18-inch rims gives the rather passive shape a nice, aggressive edge. Now, of course, the question is, why the supercharger? After all, it's been exhaust-driven turbochargers that have been all the rage ever since Porsche first fitted one to a GT car back in 1975. Turbos were a must on Grand Prix cars for most of the 80s until they were outlawed for simply being too powerful. And no sporty road car would be seen dead without one. And the answer lies right here with this automatic transmission, an item central to the marketing theme for target buyers of modern-day XKs. With a turbo, you need plenty of revs to really get it going. Once on song, it certainly is more efficient and more effective than a supercharger. But if you just want to dawdle along and then just go, it's the supercharger that's more ready for instant action. That mysterious wonder of torque is what it's all about. Let's face it, we can only do 30 or 50 or 70, and this isn't the sort of car that you're going to take to a track for a thrash around. You just want to get to the limit as quickly as possible, and lots of torque means lots of acceleration. The supercharger pushes the power of the 4-litre V8 up from 290 to 370 horsepower, but perhaps more importantly, it delivers the same torque at just 1,200 revs as the normally aspirated version has at its optimum. So, when you want to just get away from the crowd, you simply go. Oh, that's 30 miles an hour. And... When you catch up with the 40 mile an hour crawl on the country roads, you're able to... ...overtake very quickly and therefore very safely. And if you do get away to the autobahn and want to show off to the old German rivals, the acceleration at the top end is perhaps even more impressive. This supercharged XKR will accelerate from 140 miles an hour to its limited maximum of 155, a full 50 seconds faster than the normally aspirated XK8. And that's thanks not so much to the extra 80 horsepower, but more to that extra 100 pounds foot of torque. Jaguar engineers have worked long and hard on the downside of the intrusive noise of a supercharger. There is still a little whistle there, but you wouldn't want it any other way.
And I have to say, the more I drive this XKR, the more I'm impressed with it. It's a driver's car. I was expecting something a bit soft and wallowy, but the handling really is very taut and the feedback through the steering is excellent. Even the ride is nice and firm, especially considering that this is a luxury GT car. The automatic transmission is one of the best I've used. The kick down comes in very smoothly indeed. And this famous Jaguar J-Gate is very nice to use in its manual mode. All of this must be bad news for the other Ford-owned Grand Tourer, because at £60,000 for the coupe and £67,000 for the convertible, the Aston Martin DB7 is now outperformed and underpriced by 20 grand. Well, I guess that's the price you have to pay for something that is perhaps a little prettier and certainly a lot more exclusive. Oh, to have the choice. And if you want to be sure to see an XKR close up, get yourself to Top Gear Live at Silverstone over the bank holiday weekend, May 22nd to 25th. Well, that's it for this series, but don't forget Top Gear Live, Friday the 22nd to Monday the 25th of May. Call 0990 for more details. And here's the address and phone number for Quentin's The Car's The Star. That, of course, will keep him occupied. The rest of us will be appearing at a Sheffield nightclub, naked as the day we were born. And we're even thinking of making a film about it, though we don't know whether that'll really catch on. Still, it's being a milkman, I suppose, or doing a paper round, or the other things we had to do last summer when the top gear wasn't on the air, which was... But Top Gear Motorsport keeps the engine running on BBC Two throughout the summer on Mondays at ten past two.